I've toured Australia I've gigged in Canada Sang in Vienna, Paris So we're uh, here today on the Live Sound Scadge Productions for the Telford Rocks interview and I'm very, very pleased and honoured to have with us today Mr Raymond Froggett. So we'll just crack straight on with the interview because I've got quite a few things that I, I want to know. So, Ray, thanks very much for coming down today. My pleasure, mate. Thanks for inviting me. No problem at all. How would you describe, for all the people that, that don't know yeah. know your music, the, the type of music that you play and write? It would be difficult to answer that, really. I, I mean, I've been writing songs for 40 years, odd, and throughout all the different phases of music we've existed. So my songs haven't changed, you know, they... Uh, they're still in the same style, and to put it into a particular style of music would be almost impossible to do. But it's liked by the music I play live. It's liked by uh, uh, like country rock uh, people and yeah. uh, audiences of that sort of calibre. And uh, yeah. I mean, the age groups go right across the board. We have a lot of young people and a lot of quite elderly people too, They're like myself. My <laughs> <laughs> dear fellow, I, I have been to a couple of your shows, and uh, the the thing that seems to mark out the audience yeah. is you've always got at least a couple of rows of people up there with uh, froggy scarves and things, oh, yeah. and a loyal following no matter where you go. Yeah, we we do have that. I th- I think any band that's been going as long as we have, I mean, you get a hardcore uh, of people, and don't forget, I mean, we've had. Uh, Records released by major labels for 40 years, you know, starting off with Polydor when they very first started, and to, you know, Warner Brothers yeah. and all the Jet Records, all the major labels in every country in the world. So over all of those years, you pick up uh, a following that you don't even know exists yourself, you know, until yeah. you actually go to these countries, and, and there they are. So all, all the while that every band is going, you're gathering people who begin to love you for some reason, which is always nice. Of course, yeah. of course. I said, you've, you've been signed to um, to some fairly major labels, as you've just mentioned, yeah. and you've been going now for, for 45 years yeah. with your band. Yeah. A lot of the bands that Telford Rocks are in, involved with um, yeah. are very, very young bands, yeah. and we've worked out that the average length of time for a, a band to be together is somewhere between six months and one year. After 45 years, do you have a, a well, secret uh, to how you manage to... Well, I, don't, I think a, a lot of that's the, the time that we live in, you know. I mean, when you think of some of the old bands that, that started when we did, they are still together and still playing, if they're still alive. I mean, a lot of them yeah. are a lot of dead and gone. But, uh, I mean, the times were different then, and there were a lot more places to play when we were young. So we were able to... Go, go abroad for, I don't know, six months at a time. And in that sort of way, you can sort of build a brotherhood of, uh, of playing music together and depend on each other so much that you find uh, something uh, welds in you that, you know, you must stick like glue to really exist. And now I find it, when I see the young children now, uh, I feel a bit sorry for them because they, they get well, not very many places where they can go and play mm-hmm. and uh, to a lot of people. So it, I, th- I think that that's frustrating and that'll, that'll destroy any band. I mean, the, for us, it was the next gig and it was only a day away. So yeah. people sometimes, now they're young and they have to wait maybe six months to do a gig and in those six months you can get very frustrated and very hurt and uh, and when you're young you're full of energy and you need to play a lot and if you can't you'll split up sadly yeah I, I can understand that um, over the, the many years um, you said you've been signed to, to major labels yeah do you find it different um, either easier or harder, working under your own control without the, the pressures that the, some of the big levels can put on artists? Or? Well, we always felt when we, we first got signed up by Polydor Records and uh, Polydor now a massive world thing, but at that time they were just starting up in England 
I mean, the only people on the label was the Bee Gees and us, and that, they were the only two bands existed on it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't write songs, and the Bee Gees were writing. So Robin and Barry, they wrote my first song for me to to release. It's the worst song that the Bee Gees have ever wrote in their <laughs> entire existence. But they must have thought, well, we might as well give it to the opposition, you know. So I, I recorded it. In, it was called House of Lords, and uh, I mean, I'm sure they'll, for, they'll forgive me for saying it. No wonder they never recorded it. <laughs> so they did do a demo of it for me to learn, and uh, it got played about twice on radio, uh, BBC Radio One or something. And so it didn't do us any harm <laughs> because yeah, yeah. people just threw it away. <laughs> but uh, that was my first uh, experience of uh, of recording with Polydor, and then uh, we were at a happy time with Polydor for five years that was the extent of our first recording contract and in that time we made uh, an album and about eight singles which singles was the thing to do in the days you know yeah. make a single and bring it out and throw it at the wall it might stick yeah. and we had a lot of success with it you know especially because Polydor were very big in Europe I mean they were a massive German company and uh, they distribute over there so we had its number ones everywhere you know in yeah. Holland and France and Denmark and all those Scandinavian countries and uh, over here they weren't sort of they hadn't got the distribution right so I mean the Bee Gees were okay because they had Robert Stigwood with them so the, the RSO organization uh, pointed their stuff out yeah so they were able to uh, to overcome that because Stigwood was managing them which was great for them but, uh, you know, there was the, the early days of, uh, of Polydor were a great learning curve for us. We knew, we realised how, how you make proper records and you go into proper studios and, and how much it costs, yeah. you know, and, and how much time can be wasted and how important that is for the recording company. And, I mean, your question was, do you find it easier to under your own control? Well, I have to say... With those uh, days, you have to learn your business and in order to get your own label and to distribute and do all of those things and present it to the business, yeah. your finished thing, you've got to know what you're doing. You know, So you have to be with those early days of learning like us with Polydor and uh, and then later with Warner, Bro Bro Warner Reprise and, and, uh, and Bell Records yeah. and places like that. Uh, if you if you learn instead of just being there and saying you're making a record, you can do that later on in life. But you wouldn't want to do that as young as at you the, are at the start. Do you no. see it more as a, a progression of going on? Yeah, to I mean the thing from... is you got to you have to realise in this country that you 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 you're either going to be a star or you ain't. But you don't mean to say you ain't going to be in the music business. You know, there's room for everybody to do what you do. I mean, if if your whole aim used to be a star, you ain't never going to be one, you know, <laughs> don't matter what you do. So, you know, you, you've got to be in the right place at the right time for the right people loving you. I mean, yeah. even if you was to get a big recording contract with, the, I don't know, the biggest recording company in the world, and the bloke who signs you left, then you're dead in the water because yeah. nobody else there thinks you're any good, only that yeah. one fella. So, you know, that there's like luck... The, the timing so, and look, the look. looks come along. Yeah, you've got to have a lot of luck in this business. 